So the flywheel is turning. And by flywheel, I mean the blockchain uh, flywheel. Uh, it is, we can see it's starting to turn around the world, and it's going to arrive in North America with some vigor uh, in the next uh, 12 to 18 months. And so the question I would pose to you as an interested uh, uh, audience is, what role are you going to play in blockchain? Um, for me, it's very important to put blockchain into some kind of a relevant uh, context. The Internet of Things, the sensors, the phones that we all have, they generate data, and lots of it. And they're generating so much data that we now are turning to artificial intelligence and machine learning to actually read and interpret the data. It's, it's the, the tools we've used in the past to interpret the volume of data uh, are no longer fit for purpose. And the robots and the autonomous technologies are going to now apply that data. And where will that data sit? It's going to sit in cloud computing environments because the sheer volume of it is so vast now that it's outstripping most organizations' abilities to even house the volume of information we're talking about. Now, where does blockchain fit and how does it hang together? Blockchain is a complicated animal, um, but in this very simple terms, think of it as a Excel spreadsheet, rows and columns. The rows are transactions or records and columns are the metadata. The way blockchain works is it takes this same spreadsheet and it distributes it to hundreds of computers around the world. Uh, it allows um, computers to take the role of a trusted player in an exchange of information between two parties. Why is this relevant? It means you kind of don't need a bank. Right now, my transactions for me with my bank on my bank account are held at a bank. They're the ones with the spreadsheet. They're the only ones with the spreadsheet. I don't keep track of my own money. Some of you might, but I don't. I don't keep track of my money. I don't know where I spend it. I let the bank record it onto that spreadsheet. Well, what if that spreadsheet was handled by a whole bunch of co uh, different uh, computers around the world? And it was set up in such a fashion that it can't be changed, can't be altered after the bank records have been recorded to that spreadsheet. If that was the case, I wouldn't need the bank. Here's a very simple mnemonic to think about things in our social world, our human and physical world, where blockchain technology will have a role to play. Atomic. Atomic. A, assets. T, trust. O, ownership. M, money. I, identity, and C, contract. If you have one or several of these elements at play, that particular, and you have a business problem you're wrestling with, that business problem is amenable to a blockchain solution. Now, how does this play out in oil and gas? Well, this is the oil and gas uh, supply chain. So in the oil and gas supply chain, we have the functions at the front end of extracting oil and gas. And as I mentioned, if you could put cars on blockchain, could you put frack units on blockchain or drilling rigs on blockchain? Yes, you can. And there's a Calgary company today exploring the possibility of putting, uh, using blockchain to record um, the activities at a drill site. Because if they had the activities at a drill site recorded on blockchain, they could quite easily pay the supplier in a much faster and more effective uh, manner. Where does the oil go after you've produced it? Well, it goes into the supply chain, goes into pipes and trucks and ships and so forth. Well, guess what? There are uh, blockchain companies working today to turn on blockchain-enabled solutions to track petroleum product as it moves through the supply chain. Walmart does this with mangoes, pork, and tomatoes in China. Could you do it with oil, natural gas, and so forth through the supply chain? Yes, you can. After it goes through the supply chain, then goes to the refinery, and then from the refinery, it's sold through to the, so through the supply line, diesel fuel, jet fuel, and so forth. And there are blockchain companies, one in particular called VAKT, VACT, out of Europe, uh, about to go live in November, December of this year, where they will put cargoes of petroleum products that are being sold on blockchain, and those cargoes will move their way through the Amsterdam, Antwerp, Rotterdam, Harbor area, and eliminate all manner of uh, transaction costs associated with uh, the movement of those uh, goods through the supply line. All recorded on various blockchain um, structures throughout. How much value is at stake here? McKinsey estimates that if you were to apply blockchain structures to thinking about the purchases of Christmas trees, which is a, um, a, a wellhead configuration used for controlling the flow of hydrocarbons up to the top of the well, or to um, uh, other uh, ball valves, for instance, uh, you're looking at anywhere between 35 and 50% cost reduction. Well, what if you could put the land title and the land registry onto a blockchain that would prevent any one party from rewriting all the land records? So guess what? Countries around the world are adopting this technology for exactly this purpose. Now, word of warning. 
many industries have uh, decided or thought we're immune to these technology innovations. They're not going to affect us. The taxi industry, not going to affect us. Um, taxi industry in New York City, if you had a license plate, a plate to buy um, your, to, to sell uh, taxi conveyance services in New York City, that plate was worth a million dollars two years ago. Today it's worth 50000 Okay, Uber has completely transformed how companies think about the taxi industry. Where blockchain works is when there are a lot of nodes or a lot of participants in the system. Having a blockchain-based business model um, and nobody else to transact with is like having a Facebook page with no friends. Right? It's, it's pointless. So what you want is to get as many companies as you can involved with your structure, as many nodes as you can. So the most successful companies and blockchain structures out there have a number of uh, participant companies in their nodes. And the bigger the nodes, the more structures you have, the more impact the technology uh, cost reductions are. Here's just a few of the most um, urgent ones and active ones in oil and gas uh, to be aware of. EWF is a consortium of major oil companies uh, in Europe to enable um, transactions similar to the lines of VAKT. Petroblock is a Canadian startup based in Toronto, also looking at how do I do trading and transaction and petroleum products on blockchain. The Maritime Blockchain Labs is a shipping lab now. Um, Maersk and IBM have been in the media about putting um, shipping manifests on blockchain structures. Guild One, Canadian uh, Calgary company, while working with NAL, has paid the first uh, royalties to the landowners of, for purchasing and uh, sales of uh, oil uh, using a blockchain structure. So it's now settling, settling uh, royalties. Quisitive uh, is a blockchain-enabled pipeline uh, technology uh, offer. And, um, and there's many, many more. Accenture estimates that there's at least 200-odd blockchain projects in the world. I think there's an awful lot more than that.